All right. Good afternoon, guys. Wait till you guys file in just a little bit. Awesome. Guys, feel free to turn your cameras on. We're going to make this a little conversational if you'd like. You don't have to participate. You can definitely keep it off, but would love to hear from you and make this more conversational if you're willing. Cool. So client love. One, what is it? Two, how's it going to make me more money? Three, can you implement it? And four, why should you care? I'm going to go over all those, answer all of those questions for you guys today. And I think the biggest thing is, how's it going to make you money? So let me tell you a little bit about myself and why it's made me money. And I'll tell you a little, little bit more about what it is. So I'm Travis Cox. I'm the CEO of Olivian team in Louisville, Kentucky. We have eight agents, one support staff, as well as a ton of support from Livian on the back end from VAs and other operating systems. Our production was 204 units in uh, 2022 and 46.9 million. And then I can successfully attribute 71% of our units to client love and 78% of our GCI to client love. So there's definitely something behind it. It definitely works. And let me tell you what it is. And client love is special to me in many ways because for me, it doesn't just mean my past clients, my friends and family. It goes well beyond that. Does anyone, does anyone have a, a, I guess, a thought on what clients are to them beyond just past clients, friends and family? Anybody? How do you define clients? I think it's just anybody that you might be able to help uh, purchase or sell a home. Right. Absolutely. So anyone that can, will, or has referred to you in the past or worked with you in the past or in the future. And it doesn't just stop with friends, family, and the people that you think may work with you. We're also going to talk about realtors today as well. We've, we've put a ton of time and energy and money really into marketing to other realtors and it's paid off. A quick stat is we've had 42 command referrals in the last 24 months alone. Very inexpensive, very cheap to do, super simple. It's just the one thing that kind of falls through the cracks, right? It's not the one thing you're thinking about on a daily basis or weekly basis. So I'll go into what that looks like, but you're exactly right. A client is anyone who can refer you, has referred you, or anyone that you think may refer you or work with you, it's, it's especially realtors and vendors. Has anyone heard Gene Rivers talk about why you should work with your vendors? to get more referrals. If you haven't, definitely look up Gene Rivers. I went to a class, um, I forgot the name of it, but about six years ago, Gene Rivers talked for about two and a half hours about how he restarted his business after a major issue uh, or a major hurricane. And mostly the business came from his agent partnerships and vendor partnerships. So we'll go into what that looks like too. So why can other realtors be considered a part of your sphere? and clients. The big thing for me is the way you really get into this, especially if you're with Keller Williams, if you're not with Keller Williams, uh, there's a couple of different ways you can do it, but command has, if you haven't updated your command profile, do it now on this call, do it later, do it today. That is the number one thing you can do to start getting more referrals today. The second thing you're going to do is hit that little grow my network button and go in and friend request 10 different realtors from cities that you see the referral patterns coming from. Does everyone know how you can go through the referral patterns and see what cities are sending your city's most business? If you, if you need some help on that, please, I'm gonna drop my email in the chat real quick. I'll send you a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that, by the way. Let me drop this in here while we're talking. So you can essentially go to command, find the referral patterns, the places that are sending your location, the most business, and go to those cities and friend request the top 10 agents in every city. Do 10 a week until you grow your platform, your, your network to a sustainable amount. And what that's going to do is every time someone puts in a outreach or a broadcast in your area, with, when you're friends with more people, when, you've, when you have more connections, you're going to see it more. They're going to pop up more. Or they may just pick you because now they have your profile, they have everything about you. And you're targeting the people who are sending you the most business. Your city is the most business. So that's the second thing to do in command. Immediately go in. I have a VA do it for me. 
every single week, there's 10 to five, five to 10 requests sent every single week. And that alone, just sending those requests and updating my profile, I seriously sold 42 homes, closed 42 referrals from command and command connections. So it's definitely doable. I didn't do anything else beyond that. You can take it a step further and market to those realtors now as well. Now you have their information, put them into a, I don't want to say a drip campaign because that can be somewhat easy to do and lazy sometimes, but reach out to these people. I'm going to tell you about what that looks like as well. Um, so command referrals are huge. And then also find your unique identifier as a realtor to other realtors. Everybody has one. Mine is I'm in Louisville. I work in Indiana and Louisville. So you have to have dual license, right? And I also work in areas in Kentucky and outside of Louisville that most realtors in Louisville don't want to go to. So I, I have these unique areas that I work in that I'm able to go in and talk to my partners in Louisville and say, you don't want to do it, but I do. Send, send me your business. And I'm consistently asking. And without the consistent ask, they're probably not going to send it, right? So we'll go into what that looks like too. Um, so command profile is important. And then social media. So social media for other realtors can be super important. We talk all the time about not being a secret agent for your sphere. Don't be a secret agent for other realtors either. Explain and communicate that unique identifier. I explain and communicate all the time that we do Indiana referrals, as well as the other areas outside of Louisville, Kentucky that other realtors maybe not want to drive, may not want to drive through. We have five different MLS, MLS um, subscriptions. So I'm, I'm everywhere. We're, try we're trying to be everywhere at least. So that's really important. Um, social media to do this, either videos, and you can create, a, I'm going to go into how to create a list on Facebook. Uh, and I'll give you a step-by-step -step for that as well. But creating a list on Facebook for realtor partners is really important. If you can go in and create a list on Facebook of all the realtor partners and then post a video, post something once a week, once a month to that list only that explains your unique value proposition as a realtor looking for more referrals, that's huge. And I bet you guys didn't think we're going to start off a client love uh, <laughs> Zoom with how to get more referrals from realtors, but that is exactly what uh, we're going to start th this conversation with. So uh, that's a huge part of my touch campaign is realtors. And does anyone have any questions about what that looks like that I've said so far? It's easy stuff. And I promise you it'll make you money. So that's great. Cool. If we got no questions, I'll move on to the 60 touch campaign breakdown. And by the way, if you guys email me after this, I'll send you PDFs, links, everything that I'm going to talk about today, I'll send you guys a full breakdown of it. So if you send, if you email me, the email's in the chat box, I'll email you everything I'm going to talk about today in detail. So the 60 touch campaign is broken down like this. We have 12 monthly giveaways, 12 monthly videos. I break it down even further. I go into one per week, 12 monthly newsletters, 12 home value reports. And I'll give you some examples of, of systems that you can use to do this. Four quarterly mailed newsletters, four quarterly client events, and then pick four holidays and events to choose from. Birthday, home anniversary, new job, new relationship, relationship anniversary, so on and so forth. So four more touches come from a holiday message and two more of the, the potentials I just listed off there. And I'm going to break each of these down. So if you didn't get that, don't worry, you will get more of it. So I'm going to start with the social media campaign and how this works and how I implement it into the 60 Touch campaign. So I already talked about creating a list for realtors. Create a list for all of your past clients. Either you do it, make it a task as soon as you close a deal, as soon as you get somebody under contract, as soon as you get a referral, put them into your sphere list. And again, I'll show you guys how to do that or, or at least give you a step-by-step -step in the PDF I'll send you guys. But make sure you create a list of all your sphere, past clients, anyone who you think might refer you. And you're going to look through this list for people who refer conversation starters. So I'm going, like, just like I said on the last touch there, every time someone started a new position, a new job, got a promotion, every time someone has an anniversary or a birthday or a something notable, doesn't matter. Even if it's like a something interesting that they did, I tell my team all the time and they get upset with me because I tell the story all the time. But I first started doing this when I saw a client of mine 
posted a video of his daughter doing handstands in the crib at like 3 a.m. And it was funny. So I, I just had a, a, a child myself. I called him. I hadn't talked to him in two years. I was like, hey, man, that was really funny. Your, your kid was doing the handstands. That, that was hilarious. Um, how you been? And we talked for about 30 minutes. And ever since then, I've been using just conversation starters on Facebook to create more touches for clients. That conversation turned into a, a better relationship for us. He's now an investor and has closed 12 houses since then. I'm not sure without reaching out to make a better relationship that that, that would have happened. He only did one deal with me. It was a quick deal. We didn't talk since. And that kind of, and that happened. Um, this conversation was right before COVID went, um, went in through everything. So we really had to change the way we ran our business. And the biggest part of that, of our change at least was making sure that we're loving our clients. So that's why we created client love. Now you can also go through your Facebook list for giveaways. So we'll start with the monthly giveaways. On those lists that you create, you can post a monthly giveaway just to that list. No one else is going to see it. Just the list that you've created. I do this with my favorite of Starbucks. Every single month, I'll go into my Starbucks app. I'll add $200 to it. I'll post and text that Starbucks screenshot of my QR code to pay to my past clients and everyone on my list in Facebook. And they'll go in and use it. It'll be gone in two hours. I only ask for one thing in return, either a picture, something that you're grateful for, or something positive of note. Of, of note. Just tell me anything. doesn't matter. I'm not asking for referrals. I'm not asking for their business. I'm not telling them to go fill out my website. I'm just asking for something positive, something noteworthy. Take a picture, share your experience, some motivational words, whatever it is. I always change it up, but I'm always asking for something in return. Doesn't have to be a referral. It can be just something you, you know, you want to engage with them on. The cool thing about that is when they do this, the pictures roll in. It's really cool. You can post them. They'll, you can ask them if you can post them on Facebook. That's even better. But the second thing is when they actually give you something back, like, hey, I hope you have a great day. You're, an, you're amazing. Love what you do. They, there's something nice. That's a great way to get into a better relationship with your client right there. Boom. They may say something about you that you didn't think, maybe, they, maybe you didn't think they liked you. <laughs> maybe you didn't think that you talked to them enough, but they say something nice. You say it back. Now you got a better relationship. You can reach out to them more going forward. It's not just this mundane, here's my monthly newsletter. Here's my Facebook post. Please like and share it. You actually have a relationship now. And that's why it's called client love. So again, we have, giveaways are super simple. Post it on the Facebook list. You can text them as well. And I'll give you an app. If you're, on a, if you're an um, iPhone user, it's called Hit Em Up. I'll post that in the chat as well. Hit Em Up is an app that you can download your client list to as well or tag from your contact list. Create a text message with a template with uh, little fillers like first name, last name, whatever, company name. And once you fill your message in, pick your list, you can just keep tapping send. I do it for 270 clients every time I do it. You just keep tapping send till the list is done and it sends individual text messages to each one of them. It's awesome. Hit them up is a great way to, it's free by the way as well. It's a great way not to have to pay for a text system and also send individualized text messages in a mass way. So that's one huge thing. And then also- Travis, does that, um, real quick, does that send it from your personal number or do you have like a number that you have to put in there? Yeah, all personal number. The app connects to your to your phone as if it were an iMessage or um, um, what's the other one? I can't think today. <laughs> the other messaging app. Yeah. It, 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 act, it uses your phone number and you're able to just keep on hitting send. So every time you go to a next person, it'll pop up your text screen and you hit send again. Yeah. I just know, I was just wondering because like Twilio, it has a whole different number. And so people are like, this isn't Jeff. So. Yes, that's why I, I was trying to find one that made sense that that way I didn't have to tell everyone this is my new number because we all have a million numbers. We got our CRM number, Twilio number, giveaway number, whatever. There's so many numbers, but hit them up is really great because it actually uses your phone number. in your It's an in-app, uh, in iMessage app um, add-on. So good stuff there. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. So then what we're also going to do is, like I said, make the calls on the so once they give you something in return whatever it is whatever message it is make calls to them 
call them and say, hey, I'm glad you used it. Thank you for your message. I really appreciate you. Let me know if I can help you in the future. I really strive not to ask for business all the time. I really do. That's probably contradictory to what you should do, but I do not ask for business all the time. Instead, I'm touching them so much throughout this campaign. They're seeing me so much. They know I'm a realtor because everything that I send them says I'm a realtor, but I'm never asking them for business. So it, it, it's the interesting part of that is when I made that switch, because I used to ask for business all the time. That was the only thing I did. I called a hundred people a day, asked them, who do you know that can buy or sell real estate? Can you send me their name and number? Give me their information. It was always the same cycle. So when I changed that, for me at least, and, I, and by the way, this is not my idea. I've heard all of this from going to Mega Camp Family Union. I've taken pieces of everyone's business and put it into my own. But the great thing is they stop answering that phone call like, ah, oh, what does Travis the realtor want? He's going to ask me for a client. He's going to ask me for something. I got less answers. But when we changed it to more of a value add when we reach out and more of a conversation when we reach out versus asking for business, we noticed a huge uptick in engagement, a ton. We had more people show up to our client events. We had more people engage in the giveaways. We had more people like and share our Facebook posts because now they feel, I don't want to say indebted, but they feel you know, like they're a part of something bigger now, I guess. I'm not sure what words to put behind it, but it's different. Trust me, the engagement is much different. So that's that. That's the giveaway. And then uh, the 555 social media um, challenge that we do every single week, our team does, is just this. And this is included in the touch campaign. Comment on five separate client posts per day. Just comment. Doesn't have to be about business. Again, you can just comment and say, congratulations, love it. That's awesome. Cool game, whatever. And doesn't always have to be happy stuff too. If it's sad, lend a helping hand. Give some words of encouragement. Five shares with a comment. Don't just share it. Put a comment on the share. Support the people in your sphere. They'll support you. And that can look like someone started a business. Share it. This is a great friend and past client of mine. Please support their business. But don't just share. Also, message five people or add five people to your database. Every day. You can just message them saying, hey, thinking about you. Hope you have a great day. Nothing crazy. And then add five people to your database. So even if it's you haven't, you notice someone you haven't talked to in a while, ask them for updated contact info on the message. Hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. I'm going to make sure I include you in our monthly giveaways and everything that we do as, a, as an organization. Could you give me your updated email address? I don't have the right one. You're coming from value. They're not just asking for referrals again or their, or their uh, information, which I love. And then every day on the way home from work, and the way to work, I use Facebook to create conversations like I just said before, and I call at least five people a day, two or three in the morning, two or three at night. And it's usually something goofy. It's usually a game. It's usually like I have a ton of, I'm a huge Bengals fan, so upset this year, but I have a ton of Bengals fans in my sphere, and I call them often. That's an easy one. That's a shortcut for me. <laughs> I'm also a Kentucky fan, so we talk about games. I also just generally like sports. So anytime something sports pops up or one of my client's kids has a game and they, one of the ones last week was one of my client's kids uh, was his first basketball game and he shot the ball and he like ran down the court with his arm up like he was Steph Curry or something. It was awesome. I called him. We talked about it for 20 minutes. It was a, it was a really cool conversation. This, these are just random clients, by the way. These are no one that I have actual connections to other than real estate. So this is, this is, one thing in 2020 that I can contribute a ton of success to our business in is just these calls right here. And then when you add the shares, the comments, and everything else that I'm going to talk to you about after this, on top of it, you're in front of way more people way more often. Does anybody have anything to add or questions so far? I threw it in the chat, Travis. This is Abby for anybody wondering. I'm just going to chime in. But that's a perfect way to kill two birds with one stone because not only are you touching your clients by commenting and liking their stuff and engaging with their social media as well, but that will in turn help your social media 
and get your posts in the algorithm and help them engage with your stuff as well. So that's a great, that's a great touch. Absolutely. One thing I was going to add to that too is make sure you're commenting on people who you think may do business with you. If you're commenting on a bunch of other realtors posts, guess what you're going to see and what you're, they're going to see <laughs> other realtor stuff. If your Facebook feed is full and now we want to help our people, right? We want to love on our other realtors, but if you're engaging with realtors more than you are your clients, that's why your feed is full of open houses and new listings and pending alerts. That's why right there. But if you, that's what I think, Abby, is that what you were talking about too? Is when you're, when you're engaging with your people, you're going to see your people more. Yeah. I mean, if you're being social with certain people on social media, then those algorithms are going to pick up that you have some type of relationship with them and then their stuff will start showing up on your feed. So if you want to see more of your client stuff on your feed, then start engaging with their posts. Absolutely. My Facebook feed used to be full of the open houses, new listings and everything else, which I like. It's great. But is it going to make me money? I don't like Facebook. So I want to use Facebook as an income generating tool. And the only way to do that is to be in front of your people more. And the cool thing is you are still giving them value. You're still giving yourself value. Honestly, giving other people value gives me value in my opinion. But these are things that you can do to instantly change the outlook of the way you use social media and the way it helps you. All right. Videos on social media. They're huge. You've probably heard it a million times. Everyone talks about it. It is imperative that you post some videos. You've got to separate yourself in a market like this. And separating yourself is just can be just as simple as being more visible. It really can. If they, if you, if you have a, a person talking at the dinner table tonight, they probably know five other realtors. If they saw your video this morning and thought it was informational but didn't see the other four realtors, do you think they're talking about you if they bring up real estate or the four other realtors that haven't talked to them in the last two years? They're probably bringing up you. Videos are the easiest way to stay relevant. And the cool thing is you don't even have to put a ton of effort into it. Just turn the camera on, turn it around, say something of value, get off, make it 30 seconds. The best videos, in my opinion, are under a minute. That's the ones I get the most engagement on. I'm not posting them every five seconds. I'm posting one a week. I can do better. I could post two or three a week, which I want to start. Somebody just slid something under my door. Um, <laughs> but one a week is simple enough and easy enough. I even have a, um, I created an AI software to give you video scripts, by the way. So everyone who put their emails in the chat, I'm going to send you the uh, video script creator for free. It's a it basically creates a, a script based off of your local market stats. It's for TikTok and Instagram, and it has um, um, embedded um, um, social captions as well with hashtags that are optimized for a location basis. So really easy. It just goes through the, here's how simple it is. It goes through the active pendings and closed and price changes and the total listings, divides the number of price changes by the total active listings, gives you a percentage of the market that dropped their price in the last seven days. And you just say that and you're done. So if you're scared of video, makes you nerve wracking. It's so easy. You say this script, turn your camera around, make sure you have some decent lighting at least, and then post it to Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. And my next big thing is if you haven't posted videos before, and even if you are doing it now, make sure that you upload a separate video to each platform. You can tweak it just a little bit, but when you take a TikTok video and throw it on Facebook with a TikTok watermark, your engagement is going to be nowhere near as good as if you uploaded it separately to Facebook itself. Each platform likes their own tools. They do not like other platforms' tools. So if you use another platform to post on a different platform, and it's so easy because it says share automatically to Instagram, share automatically to TikTok, and vice versa, don't hit. Just take the extra minute and a half, upload it to Facebook or Instagram by itself or TikTok. Maybe tweak it just a little bit, use a different sound, make the title a little bit different. I promise you'll get more engagement. That's one thing I learned the hard way when I started doing videos. 
It's like, why do I have some that have 2000 views and some that have 200? Well, it's because I was using TikTok and all the watermarks everywhere. And now they're all somewhat similar across the platforms. I'll post a video on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram Reels, and they'll all have about 1,500, 2,000 views. Which is really, really helpful for your real estate business. Because again, you're more visible. People will comment on them, especially if you don't make it all about business all the time. I encourage you to do that. Just first, if you're not doing videos, at least get into doing one a week. It can be business. And then start adding a couple personal ones as you go. People want to see you. They want to see what you're about. And that's the easiest way to get someone to work with you that hasn't worked with you before or maybe is considering working with you is if they can connect to you in some way, shape, or form outside of business. It's like we're all business all the time, all the time. It's all we think about. So who can I sell a house to next? But when they see you in a different light, it's much easier to connect with you. You have a much easier path to winning a new client based on what you're doing for them and the connection that they feel with you. So I've got on here at least five videos per month as a part of that social media 5555. So just to break it down again, five videos per month, five comments per day, five shares with a comment. Make sure you actually comment on it. Don't just share it. So don't hit the share now button. Hit share with comment. Five likes per day, five messages per day, or add five friend requests per day or get five you know, updated contact information. The cool thing about the 5555 is you can make it whatever you want. You can do 10 posts or 10 uh, shares one day and 25 comments the next day, it doesn't matter. If you consistently engage with Facebook or Instagram or whatever platform is uh, of yours of, of choices, you'll, you'll get rewarded if you do it correctly, you really will. All right, next, giveaways. We talked a little bit about Starbucks. That is my go-to. Starbucks is the easiest one. It's the largest. <laughs> it's, it's the most engagement we have on any of the posts because who doesn't want free Starbucks? And it's usually gone in three hours. I'm not kidding. It's like, and <laughs> now I've created this awful culture to where now they're waiting for it. So, <laughs> so every month around the first week of the month, they're like, are you sending the Starbucks out again? Like, is that all you care about is the Starbucks? But it's, it's awesome because now we're having conversation again. Now they're reaching out to me. Maybe not for the right reasons, but they're reaching out to me. Now, Starbucks is my go-to, like I said, and you can do this really easily on the Starbucks app. Uh, does Heine Brothers or maybe, I don't know, Jill. I, I'm not sure. Jill asked if, if Heine Brothers does anything similar. I just, uh, with a Starbucks app, you can just go in and add money to it. And then you have that QR code, right? So if Heine Brothers has an app, with a QR code, you may be able to do it, but you don't have to just stop at coffee too. You, you can, you know, send out a $5 gift card to 10 people if you want to just make it very, a very local giveaway. You don't have to disclose how many people you're giving it away to, right? You're, you're giving something away. Uh, is the giveaway just to your past clients or your database as well? Jay, it's, I, I switch off and on on this. So I'll, I'll post a list one month to just past clients especially if they, you know, gave me some referrals that month, or if I wanted more referrals from that than that month. But if I'm doing really good and I just want to make some more connections, I'll also post it to a separate list I have that is for a little bit larger of a scope of people. So friends of friends, vendors, other realtors. So you don't have to just do clients in your database. You can do all kinds of different people. And the vendors is simple. Like, hey, Robert from Guardian, I really appreciate your business. Here's a $5 Starbucks gift card coupon for you. Would love to get your next referral when you ever have one. I know you don't get them all the time, but I'd love to get your next one. Those little small things make a huge difference, by the way. Um, Andrew, to clarify, you don't ask clients to post on their socials and tag you. You only want them to text you. Does that feel more personal and less intentional? I, I don't ask them to post on Facebook. No, I only want them to communicate with me. Sometimes I'll ask them if I can post their picture. I'm not saying like, hey, my client won this great giveaway. I'll just say, love getting messages like this. I don't say anything else. So to clarify there, yes, I, I'm not, I'm, I want to communicate with them personally, not through social media. Once they're doing this, obviously. But when I asked them to post it, and it's usually only something really interesting. Like if it's like I had one that sent me, uh, 
her one of our one of my past clients' daughters had two cake pops in her mouth, and then ha- they had Starbucks drinks everywhere. They they used too much of the card to be honest with you, but there was like forty dollars on one spend, and there was a ton of stuff. And um, she said she really needed it that day. And her her kid was you know not having a great day, had some cake pops, re- cake pops really cheered her up, and um, I asked her to post it because she had a really nice message on it. She said cool. So I didn't say I gave my client this. I just said, I love getting messages like this. That's it. It was really cool. A lot of engagement on that, by the way. Uh, what if you're a new agent with no past clients or sphere? Jay, make them. Go into Facebook, comment and like and share and message the people who you think may do business with you or you think that may refer you. You can create your own sphere really easily because if you look at your Facebook as a tool, of all the people that you think may be able to work with you, you're going to find some. If you start engaging with people and letting them know you're a realtor, indirectly or directly, doesn't matter. You can start creating a sphere, especially if you start giving stuff away. So like Jay, if you want to go in and have 10 people, put them on a list. You can start small, by the way. You don't have to have 300 people on your list to do this. You can start with five people. It doesn't matter. But if you want to go add five people to your list who you want to know that you're in real estate and who you want to work with you eventually, add them to your list, post a giveaway. And by the way, you can spend $20. You don't have to tell them how much is on the card. I never do. It's just a QR code. And I even tell them, make sure you hurry because this will run out. And then you get the, then you get the ones that say, well, I, I drove all the way there and I didn't get one. Great. Here's five more dollars just for you. That's another opportunity for a touch. Now, if you don't want to spend $200, again, you can put 20 bucks on there. doesn't matter. You don't have to spend a ton of money to do it. I just like, I started out with, started out with $50 and I had all these parameters and stuff on it and we got some engagement. It was really cool. But once I increased it to 200 and didn't put any parameters on it, didn't say you can only spend $3 and blah, 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 blah it kind of exploded and now people wait for it. (laughs) It's funny. So there's that. Any more questions about the Starbucks giveaway before I move on to the next giveaway? Cool. All right. I also give away two tickets to a game or two tickets to a concert every year. Sometimes I do it twice per year. Depends on what's going on in our our city. And I don't post this. This is strictly communication between me and my clients. I don't post it on Facebook, the the list. I don't do, all I do is text and say, are you free at the time of the day to go watch whatever it is? And they'll say, well, with, with you or what? No, two free tickets for you. Do you want them? And if they say yes, awesome. I have a list of people I'm going to draw out of a hat. You know how the, and they, all, they all know how it works. It's most of my clients that I'm doing this with already know how this works, but I tell them I'm going to draw out of a hat and I'm going to give it away. And I usually only want 20 to, to 15 people to do this, by the way. I want my people who refer me the most to do this. I'm not doing this for everybody. So most things I'll tell you to go out and find people who can refer you or you may, that may refer you, but for something like this, that's going to cost you more money. You want to make sure you've gotten return from them already. Right? So past clients who have either worked with you recently or past clients who you want referrals from that you've worked with recently or people that have referred you recently. That's the, that's the most powerful one. When you give this out to people who have referred you most recently, it's, there's almost like this mutual understanding. Like they know why you're including them then you also want more, but you're not asking for it. So that's a really cool one. We, um, I gave away two basketball tickets um, earlier, uh, later last year, uh, giving away some concert tickets to Morgan Wallen later this year in Louisville. And then we also are doing a giveaway for March Madness Sweet 16 this year. And those are, they're decent. I mean, I, and by the way, we're going to talk about vendors here in a minute. Highly important that you get a, executive team I'll, I'll save it for just a minute but i'll say that you don't have to pay for these tickets this is marketing and we'll go into why you don't have to the next um the next giveaway that i love and by the way i'm only giving the ones that we do just because i'm a i do it all the time i know enough about it to talk about it 
I don't want to go into speculative stuff that I haven't done before and give you guys some stuff that I'm not really knowledgeable about. But these are the three that I do. So the charity hold back. This was a really cool one. In 2020, I started to hold back 5% of every commission, put it into a separate account, told my clients I was doing it, communicated the vision and the goal of why I was doing it, which was I wanted to pay off $10,000 of layaway items at Walmart for Christmas. It's not a charity, but I really wanted to do it. It's something I saw other people doing. I thought it was really cool. And I wanted to do that for our local community. So I held back 5% of every single commission check I got that year. I had about $11,200 at the end of the year. I took 10,000 of that, gave it straight to Walmart layaway in two different locations, $5,000 each. And then $1,200 of it, we helped a, another family. That was huge. I didn't do it for more referrals, didn't do it for like that. But the cool thing about that was, I, I really just personally wanted to do it. And the cool thing about it was, there one of the Walmarts we went to, it was about, I didn't do this on purpose either, by the way, but I got there and apparently that was a day that the layaway items were going back on the shelf or canceling out the accounts. And there was about 40 people online. And we got there with like two hours to spare. And they, they stood up and said, everybody in line, your layaway is not paid for. That was so cool. We didn't post it. We didn't do a video of it, but that was one of the coolest things we could have done. The amount of conversations we had at that Walmart where, where just, where it was awesome. It was enlightening, honestly. Um, so that's a really cool thing to do. And then you don't have to just do give like Walmart charities either, or, or sorry, layaway. You can go into your favorite charity, do this, communicate the vision and the reason why you're doing it, why you're so passionate about doing it. And they'll want to help you. So I communicate this when we got them under contracts at a consultation at the closing. Most often though, we really went over what it meant at the closing. And the cool thing about that is they now feel like they're a part of that giveaway with you. And they are because they contributed to the money that you made, which then you contributed to a, a charity or a giveaway of your, of your choosing. And, and that's something that uh, can be really powerful. We had a couple of people even ask us how many layaway accounts did you pay off? And that, those were cool conversations too. Any questions about that before I move on to the next thing? Cool. If you guys have anything or it's anything to add, by the way, feel free to jump in. I'm, I can be conversational. We don't have to just be, I'd rather not just be me, but if we're, if we do that, that's okay. Can we get this recording? Yes. Abby, is that correct? I'm sure you can. We'll figure it out. All right. Newsletter. Don't overthink this. It's my biggest thing on your newsletter. My biggest piece of advice is do not overthink your newsletter. Make it short, sweet, informational. And here's a few ideas for you. Partner with a lender for interest rate info. Just get, just get to the APR. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. Or get a couple of stats as to the movement that it has shown, up or down, and why it matters to you. Client success story and wins. This one's really big. And by the way, you can make this Facebook post as well. Please post your email. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yes, you can use chat GPT for sure. So you can use chat. You can use a bunch of different AI bots to generate your newsletter content. But one big thing is, or I'll give you a couple more ideas as we go, but client success story and wins. This is just, for, this is for newsletter and for Facebook posts. If you make a video about a client success story, throw it on your newsletter. My client was looking for two years. They didn't find anything they like. We got in this great program with this great lender that we work with. We finally found them a home and beat out six other people. Really happy for her and her family. Really simple. Client success stories, it's something to tie to, right? Like people, act, instead of reading your testimonials or reading your other Facebook posts that I put another one under contract, who's next? I helped this person. Here's how we helped them. Here's the value it brought them much better than just your average, I got a house under contract post. Same thing for your newsletter. Put them in your newsletter. People like to read and listen to this stuff. Post your wins too. What does your month look like? Doesn't matter if you only sold two or three houses, put them in there. That's, that's huge. Sometimes I used to feel like if I didn't do a good job that month, I wouldn't post my numbers. Don't, don't feel that way. And if you don't have anything, Post your office numbers. 
you're a part of an office, right? You're a part of an organization. You contributed to that success. Use those numbers. Our office closed 172 homes this month. We helped 192 families list their home. That's the easy way to get some more engagement if you don't have any, you know, of your own statistics to post. I've done that so much. And then when I, when I have a low month, I do that sometimes too. So absolutely do that. I think that's, that's super helpful. Uh, pull local stats for your market as well. Just give some quick info. How many listings dropped their price this month? How many went back on market? How many new listings did we have? What was the average sell to the list price ratio? Average days on market. Just pull some quick stats. Highlight your available inventory as well. If you have three or four listings, put them on your newsletter, especially if they're active. Include links to them. And when they sell, no big deal. When they click the link, it'll say pending or sold. Next is spotlight a local business. You can use ChatGPT to get some more information about this business. If you copy and paste their business description from Google profiles, Apple Maps, wherever, wherever you get the business information, ask ChatGPT to create a piece of content for your newsletter about that business. Or even better, call the business, ask them what they want posted, create a relationship with them, ask them to give you business. Spotlight a local upcoming event or events as well, especially when a big one comes to your city. In even a small one, it can be a small get together. It can be a small, you know, celebration or a small concert or one of your friends or one of your past clients is doing stand-up comedy. Throw it in there. Imagine the, imagine when you tell one of your past clients that, Hey, I'm going to send your, your skit or your next event coming up to 500 people. Is that cool with you? How do you think they'll feel? Include a quick blog or link to your blog. This is a definite chat GPT thing. Unless you like writing, do not feel like you need to. <laughs> Go to chat GPT, ask it some questions. If it needs help with some prompts, reach out to me. Uh, I'm an AI nerd, by the way, and I'm going to give you guys a couple AI tools later, but uh, definitely use that. Do not feel like you have to create all your own content. So that's the monthly newsletter, what that looks like. It's short, it's sweet. It's about two scrolls long, sent out to every one of our past clients. We're done. The mailed newsletter is really important too. Quarterly mailed newsletter. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy this expensive newsletter either. Layla, my operations coordinator, had this great idea last year. We put a QR code on a postcard that goes to our newsletter. <clears throat> the cost was cut in half, and it's just as powerful. They see my face, they see a QR code. Even if they never click on the QR code, they see my face again. They already know me. They're seeing my face again. It's another piece of brand recognition. You are the brand, by the way. Uh, the oh, thanks, Abby. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So yeah, if you need an idea of what that looks like, it's just a postcard. It just has a QR code on it. It goes straight to your newsletter on your website or wherever else you have it. Really easy. Next is a home value report. I, I include this in the newsletter or I, and I make it separate, you know, as well. So I use Fellow. It's called highfellow.com. It's a monthly subscription. There's a lot of tools in it. Check it out. And then HomeBot. HomeBot's an easy one too. Quick tip for you guys. If you don't want to pay for this stuff, I promise you there's a lender in your area using HomeBot. Most of them buy a bulk subscription and give it out to realtors for free. So either ask your preferred lender if they're willing to go into HomeBot with you because they'll send it out to other people as well. Or... Go get one of the go get with the lender who, who is currently providing it. Homebot's really cool. It's just you put the client's address in, it sends them a really cool automated report every single month with tons of clickable events. Um, it's not completely accurate, but it doesn't matter. You're, you're giving them another touch. And the cool thing is, I love when someone calls me and says, 
that oh, that report is way off. I'm like, awesome. Let's talk about it. I don't get upset. I don't try to make an excuse as to why it's off. Like, let's talk about it. Let me do a full CMA for you. That's just an automated value. Doesn't mean what your home's actually worth. Give me some ideas about what your property looks like and let me do one for you. Cheap and easy way to get a CMA done for somebody. If you don't want to do fellow or home bot, neighborhood nurtures. Command does it. Any other CRM can, CRM can do it too. If you go into any CRM, hit create a search, filter by solds and pendings, filter by their specific neighborhood and put it on a monthly drip or bi-weekly, whatever you want to do. And every single time a home goes pending or sold, it sends it directly to your client. So it's not a home value report, but at least it's something. They're, they're understanding or aware of the area. The cool thing about this is I can't tell you how many times I've had someone call and say, hey, um, <clears throat> we were talking and you know, my husband and I were talking about that uh, email you sent us uh, about the, the home that just sold up the street. I'm like, oh crap, which one? <laughs> but they get, th they get these often enough to where they're asking questions about them now. Like, hey, can you look into that one for me? What, did, what, did, what, what was so special about that one? Why did it sell for 400,000? And mine was, we only bought ours for 300. And that's a cool conversation, by the way. Why is my neighborhood 100 grand more than what I bought my home for? Uh, what are your favorite AI tools? And uh, Angel, I'm going to get into this as well, in just a little bit. I think we only have 12 minutes left, so I'll make the next couple of parts quick. We already talked about videos, but I do want to give some things about videos that you should do. We talked about the market updates, talked about posting client success stories with their permission, of course, or unless you want to make it anonymous, whatever you want to do. But be relatable. Also post some videos about yourself. What do you do? They can be 15 seconds. The attention span of everyone on social media is like three seconds anyway. It's just another post. Uh, don't be business all the time was my point on that. So to edit the videos, I do a couple different things. Video.ai, which I'll send you that right here. Video.ai turns long form content into short form content. And I'm going to use this as a way to do that here soon um, after we're done with this. Vixer. Vixer is an iOS app. I'm not sure if it's on Android. I have no clue. And then Mojo, also an iOS app. No clue if it's on Android. I'm sorry. But take a look. All three of these will edit your videos. Oh, it's I, I spelled video.ai wrong, guys. It's V-I-D-Y-O dot A-I. And it keeps on autocorrecting. <laughs> it will not let me post the way I want it to. There we go. Cool. All right. And so all three of these will help you edit your videos, put captions on them, and download a high-resolution file for you. TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram hate low-resolution files. Even if it's a little grainy and it's windy, it's going, you're in your car, whatever, it's okay. As long as you have a high resolution file that really helps your algorithm, the algorithm and makes your engagement a little higher as well. They reward you for better quality videos. And by the way, I've got a tiny light. You can buy it on Amazon. It's like 20 bucks. And there's a tiny microphone too. I don't have it with me today, but there's a tiny microphone you can buy that makes your audio sound 10 times better. That's really cool. I would definitely do that if you get into posting them more often. And then lastly, my favorite thing is if you don't want to buy a video or a, a microphone, just a cap cut is really good too. You're right, Jim. That one's really good. Cap cut has a lot of cool things about overlays and inlays as well. So if you want to get really into editing the video, cap cuts great. Thank you, Jim. What I was saying about the, um, the audio though, you can go to audible.ai, I believe. Let me figure out which one it is. I'll probably have to send this to you guys. Um, in my email, I'm going to send, but let me see. I'll have to find this one. It's a tool that you can upload your video to or podcast or whatever. And it cleans your audio for you. It scrubs it, it makes it sound like you're in front of a podcast mic and you don't even have to have an, a microphone. It's amazing. So make sure you guys give me your email so I can send that all to you. And then let me go through the next couple of things. I know we're kind of running out of time. All right, client events. I'll be real quick on this one. Partner with your vendors to pay for all of it. Get an executive team, a lender, a title company, or several, insurance agent, home inspector, 
get an executive team, make a list of all the client events you want to do, loosely price those out or very detailed price those out and go to each of those vendors and say, hey, I've done this much business with you. This is what I plan to do this year. I want to invite you and make you a platinum sponsor, a bronze sponsor, whatever the sponsorship level you want to call it. Here's how much money I need from you to contribute to make sure this is a success for both of us. I haven't paid for a client event in quite some time. We've done things like have a Super Bowl watch party, March Madness Selection Sunday watch party and ticket giveaway, themed picture events. Uh, Dolly the photo bus is a local one that we love to do for Christmas. And then um, um, you can do NFL watch parties, whatever. We did a movie night one time as well. We found somebody that has these really large TV screens or uh, blow up screens. We rented out a parking lot, put a, <laughs> we had 260 people come and watch a movie at nighttime with their kids. It was really cool. An outdoor movie. All right. When you have a client event, use Eventbrite. And you can ask specific questions in Eventbrite every time someone signs up. I use this to get updated contact information and address. You can ask all this stuff. And then based on what they put in, you can ask them, do you plan to buy or sell this year or in the next 18 months? Yes or no. If they say yes, there's a whole other list of questions we ask. And then we ask, do you, do you know anyone looking to buy or sell real estate? Give us the referral if you do. And they'll literally put it in the, we just had one pop up a couple of days ago for our next client event. Someone, two people referred us out to somebody. I got to call them today. Those are really cool. And based off what they say, if they own their own home, when you fill out this event bright link, send them the automated uh, value report, whatever system you're using. Set them up on a search in your CRM or do the fellow or home bot. And there's a bunch of others too. It's not just limited to those three, by the way. All right, a few other things. We were going to get into the AI tools. So I use hit them up on iOS. Um, that's not an AI tool, but that's the iOS tool we talked about for texting. MailChimp or Beehive for your newsletter. Beehive is B-E-E-H-I-I-V. Beehive is like MailChimp, but I think it's a little more customizable and less... Um, it's, it's not, it's, I don't want to say the word clunky, but I don't have a better word. So clunky it is your CRM for automated actions, command, follow-up boss, boomtown, all the CRMs have automated actions. You can implement a lot of my 60 touch campaign with automated actions. So you're never actually doing them. Automation is the, the way of the future already, but it's way easier to handle all the stuff you have to do on a daily basis, plus your 60 touch campaign, if you automate a lot of this stuff. So a couple other, a couple other things. Um, I created an AI service called descriptionwizard.com. And I'll post that in the chat as well. Descriptionwizard.com, every time you have a listing, if you go to it, it's $8.99 a month. And I want to post a promo code in here for you guys to get 25% off. It's called, the promo code is DW25. Every time you have a listing, go to descriptionwizard.com, sign up, and then input information about your listing. It'll automatically spit out two listing description options. By the way, there's MLS requirements embedded, character limits embedded, and then three social captions for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram with optimized hashtags for SEO as well. Every single time, there's an unlimited listings for $8.99 a month. And it'll make it six seventy four, dollars I think, per month if you use the 25% off discount. Can you give a rundown of the 60 touches again, please? Yes, Jay. I'm going to, Jay, did you put your email in here? I'll just, I'm going to email you the entire thing as well. Cool. And then also, it's not an AI tool, but uh, I started greenstats.com. So if anyone in here is looking to track their production, commissions, pipeline management, and do a full scale realtor profit and loss with bank integration, greenstats.com is the way to go there. Really cool tool if you're looking to get more into your tracking of your commissions and pipeline. Other AI tools I love, ChatGPT is not free anymore, but ChatGPT is awesome, obviously. I uh, love ChatGPT. And then I also use um, copy.ai for if I want to go into more detail about writing copy for marketing. And then you can use something called TribeScaler. TribeScaler will create hooks for your Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter post. They claim it'll help you go viral. I have not went viral on any of the TribeScaler tweets so far, but 
the hooks are better than what I was writing. So it's cool. Uh, what else? There's a ton of AI systems. I'm building a lot of AI systems myself. So I would love to keep you guys abreast of those with their email. So I will do that. Any other questions for me? We got like four minutes. Please ask away. Would love for you to. Any other questions, guys? I do actually, sorry. Yeah, please go ahead. Um, so can you just give like an example of like how many people you have in your database and like what's been your return on your database since you've been doing the 60 touch plan? Yeah, like I said, we, we did uh, 46.9 million in volume last year. 78% of that was client love. Now I'm, I'm generalizing this, right? So any of our sources that are referral, past client referral, agent to agent referral in our sphere that we actually market to, um, past clients in general, friends, family, anybody that are anybody that's engaged in my sphere, I call client love. So 78% of that, of our business was client love last year, of our GCI. 71% of the units were from client love. How many people do you have in your database? 26,000 uh, leads in general and, and or so met, so unmets, a to Mets and unmets, a total of 26,000. Mets, we have a little over 8,000. I've been in business for 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, we have eight agents and um, we've sold a little over 1,000 houses since 2019. So we've, um, we've got quite a bit in there. Okay. We, should, we can do a lot better job with the unmets though. I will tell you this, this is client love and I got to do a lot better with unmet love. Jill, that's awesome. Now you have like a million things to start with. I probably gave you too much work to do. <laughs> no problem, Tammy. Appreciate you. Thank you, Sherry. Appreciate that. Mind blowing right now. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. That's awesome. <clears throat> if you guys ever have, <clears throat> I can't talk today and I've got all kinds of allergies going on. So I'm going to post my number in here as well. If you guys need me for anything, please reach out. I don't mind to take calls. I call all day for a living anyway. Um, tell me more on green stats. Jim, reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you more about that. I'll post the link to green stats in here as well for you guys. No problem, Jim. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Cool. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. I'll come back on again.